Hola, bom dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream, YouTube channel and podcast. And uh, I have uh, Dagmar with me today, as promised, who is starting a new online drawing class. She's an artist based in Porto from the Czech Republic. And uh, she's really smart. Not only can she draw, she can speak, obviously, Czech, but Portuguese and English. And she was uh, a little bit concerned about her coming on uh, in, in terms of speaking English, but her English is awesome, I think, and so much better than my Czech or even my Portuguese. I'm really looking forward to speaking to Dagmar in a while and talking about how to be an artist in the quarantine times, in the coronavirus times, and uh, how she's developing her business and her drawing class that way. Um, before then, um, good morning to you all. Thanks for joining us. And you see I've got on the screen there, how normal is it now? I just think it's really weird at the moment. It's as though the you know the decision's been made that's it we're done we're going to just get back to normal as quickly as possible now and uh, it's a very different atmosphere isn't it to the early days of um staying at home and locking down and flattening the curve you know we're, we're kind of we're not flattening anymore we're kind of breathing life back into the um economic um patient now uh, the economic patient is in the recovery room and I suppose a good a bit of news to share with you, I don't know if it's good, but I mean, uh, appropriate bit of news to share with you is from the Portugal News, the um, English speaking or English language newspaper for Portugal. See it there on the screen, sharing that with you now. Uh, Portugal, we've heard this sort of language before, I think. Um, Portugal should adopt prudent fiscal policy when possible. This is a bit reminiscent, I think, isn't it, of the last financial crash. The European Commission has recommended Portugal to adopt prudent fiscal policies as soon as economic conditions permit, uh, after taking measures to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, in accordance with a recommendation specifically addressed to Portugal in the context of the spring evaluations of the European semester. This is such technological jargon, isn't it, or economic economical not economical, economic um, technicality language, to, which is dressing up something rather sinister, I suspect. Uh, it evaluated the stability program and the national reform program. The European Commission urged Portugal to, in quotes, pursue fiscal policies aimed at reaching prudent budgetary positions in the medium term and ensuring debt sustainability, encouraging investment. Does that sound like austerity to you? It does to me. Uh, the Commission's overall assessment confirms a significant deviation from the recommended adjustment path. I'm not going to re keep reading all that sort of jargon, economic jargon. I just think in the pipeline after this, if people haven't kind of suffered enough from lockdown and, and, and cooperating with the governments all over Europe to flatten the curve, <laughs> And not only have they had to do that, now they're going to be facing austerity and, you know, the the, way, the burden of paying back debt and recovering from this will be on the people and the taxpayers again. Surprise, surprise. So a somewhat, um, I don't know if that's controversial, but um, uh, that's how I think it is. Uh, uh, the, that's what I think is in the pipeline. Uh, just to distract me slightly from that, th that fire in my belly about that. Uh, bon dia, Carl, here again from very sunny Lalay. Um, Claire and Steve with our weather report down there in the Algarve and from Sintra. Good morning all from Druba. What's your weather like there? And from Eloise, our, 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 our leader in the wine club, the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, Eloise is here thinking about the next bottle that we're going to try together uh, on a Saturday evening, if not a month from now, then maybe two weeks. We're thinking of doing them fortnightly. It was such fun last Saturday night. So Eloise, any thoughts on which bottle we're going to be trying next? I think it's going to be a a crispy white, isn't it? A slightly sweet white was one of the suggestions after doing that. Well, lovely red from the Douro. So let me know what you're thinking. You know, it looks like all, all the um, lift off is happening, isn't it? The, the lifting off of the lockdown. Um, I've got to say, I'm slightly disappointed because it, one of the analogies that was shared with me at the beginning of this is, was the pandemic going to be like a funeral or a near-death experience for our society, for our culture. And by that, I mean, you know, as tragic as funerals are, it's funny, it's a funny reflection of human behavior. It's like, you know, it's a shame we only get to see each other on these occasions. And everyone for a little while thinks, God, there must be more important things to life than us rushing around all the time. And when, when you know, when someone close to you, or you go to a funeral and, and someone's passed away, you for a moment you're thinking, you know, you reconsider your own life, don't you? And then you go back to normal. 
And that's that's what it tends to happen. With a near-death experience, with people I've spoken to who've had near-death experiences, their lives are changed beyond beyond measure. You know, they they stop doing their job, for example, or whatever. They they break things up in their life that they know are intolerable because of what they've experienced or just seen. And I thought it might be like that for our society. We were out for our first picnic last night, socially distanced picnic as a family. And um, you know, my wife Louisa said to me, the bird song is louder. You know, people have got dead insects on their windscreens again. The, the things smell better. The flowers, the honeysuckle in the air would seem to smell really sweet and pungent. And it's like nature has had a chance to come back. I had like Bob Marley. I didn't have three little birds on my doorstep. I had one little baby dove on my bathroom window this morning. Something landed on the windowsill as I was having a shower. And it was a baby dove out on my balcony that I can see here now. There was a baby owl the other night. It's like nature's coming back towards us. And... If we just go straight back into how it was, like you know, like it was a hangover as well, you know, it was a binge, a binge lockdown kind of thing where we went into it, and now we've had enough of that, and we're just going to forget it all and throw it all away. That seems such a shame, such a missed opportunity to me. I don't know what you think. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, Peter, good morning to you. Good morning from Castanera de Pera. It's a beautiful, clear, sunny day here with a cool, light breeze blowing down the valley. That sounds absolutely lovely. We've got a breezy weather here in Korea, halfway between uh, Aveiro and uh, Coimbra this morning. And I'll just have a very quick look at my seaweed to tell you what the weather's going to be like and if we're going to get a continuation. As I said, or have been saying in the last couple of days, uh, or last few days, good weather all week, I think. Clouds are few and far between. For example, today in Lisbon, they're looking at a high of 29, and that will continue, even a high of 31 on Friday. Uh, Porto is going to be a high of uh, 29 today, currently 22 and sunny. Aveiro is sunny, high of 29. Beja, high of 34 today. How about that? And high temperatures like that all week. The clouds may return at the weekend. I was hoping we were going to be knocking that down the street and the clouds would be disappearing way into next week. But I think a cloudy, possibly cloudy weekend across the country. Really nice highs. Castelo Branco, 31 today, the high. Coimbra, 33 degrees just down the road from us. So beautiful Portuguese summer weather with us. 33 degrees the high today in Evra Faro. Strangely, uh, still very comfortable, but 26 degrees and a nice warm week, but only a high of 25, 26 to look forward to. So excellent weather all week. Make the most of it, folks. Keep sending us your pictures of your growing and your gardening in the Happy Homesteaders group, uh, where we really have been embracing the lockdown, I think, in many ways and working on our gardens and increasing our efforts towards self-sufficiency and so on. So it was really lovely you know, to see so many pictures and people sharing what they're growing inside the um, happy homesteaders group there another message from peter swallows are starting to line up on the telephone wires in the morning here right outside our window oh these are such lovely images the sort of thing i'm sure that inspires dagmar um with her artistic inspiration we'll talk to her in just a moment after we've had a very quick look um as we have bec become accustomed to doing we'll get all the sort of bad news out the way and then we'll have a lovely chat about um art and being creative in just a moment because i want to go to worldometer slightly messed up my um uh, chronology this morning in, in how we look at uh, the numbers but uh, around the world this is not Portugal I hasten to add don't have a shock and spit your breakfast out coronavirus cases worldwide 5,601,281 deaths around the world 348,124 and a lovely recovery figure there around the world of uh, over, well over 2 million 2,381,000 251 and let's look more specifically just briefly um, about uh, Portugal's numbers and as I've said before the number that always really I think is very interesting and never really reported on too much is the uh, fatalities per million of population it seems to be to the, the most meaningful figure on how a country is managing and we see San Marino still uh, in the top spot albeit you know, it's a small population it's a small country but that is kind of like the worst place to be in the world in terms of coronavirus, followed by Belgium, Andorra, Spain, UK. And uh, USA has dropped uh, uh, from, well, I, I guess it's still very high in terms of the number of cases. But you see there uh, USA at 12 and you have to scroll down to 21 uh, for Portugal to find out that total cases, 30,000, total deaths, uh, 1,330 and total recoveries, 17,000. So well done, everyone in Portugal. I have my reservations about, you know, how this is going to go, second wave and all that sort of stuff. But I guess we just got to do what we got to do. And um, 
live our lives in the best possible way we can. Bon dia, Carl, from FD Devane. That sounds like a really cool name. Um, I don't know, a country singer or a, an alternative artist, FD Devane. I love that. Any road up. It is time now to put those um, rather grisly figures to one side and talk to Dagmar. Uh, Hello. Good to you, Dagmar. Lovely to be talking to you. Oh, and a, a lovely subject, creativity. How are you and where are you in Portugal? Hello, nice to meet you. I'm from the Czech Republic. I'm fine today. Um, I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> and I live in Porto. I live in Villanova de Gaia, which is Porto type, the Porto part. Sure. And are you a little bit nervous, did you say, or scared because of the being on here, not because of the coronavirus or anything like that? Oh, exactly. Not because of coronavirus, no. <laughs> I'm not scared of coronavirus. I'm glad. We, like I say, we just got to do what we got to do, haven't we, and, and sort of work our way through that. Um, it's it, Please, uh, it's easy to say to, to you, but you know, don't be nervous. A lovely group of people here who I'm sure will, will send their love and greetings to you as, as our conversation develops. They're a beautiful crowd of people here at Good Morning Portugal. And I saw your, um, your advert, I think, in one of the groups. You were testing an online drawing class and you wanted people to test the product. How, what made you do that? And tell us more about yourself and your, your work as an artist, please. So this is a quite long story because I, uh, I'm drawing and painting all my life. When I was small child, I was drawing everywhere, on the walls, you know, on floor, everywhere. And uh, I, I love drawing and I love colors, also painting. And uh, after some schools, I started to, to teach art in Prague. Uh, small children, teenagers, and also sometimes adults. And uh, I was focusing on just increasing creativity of people. Mm. And uh, uh, on my side, what I really like is painting, and I like to paint on silk. I love pa silk painting, large um, parts of silk. So this is what I love but it's quite complicated to, to teach it because you need a lot of material, but it's also possible. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in Prague, I was trying to make, uh, to, to teach uh, painting on silk, drawing on silk, but, and it, it worked. But here I don't, I'm not sure it's, I'm, I'm not sure about this idea here yet. <laughs> so okay. I decided to try to teach drawing because I know people are, quite um, aware of drawing but wish to draw i know many people who, who tell you i cannot draw i'm not able to draw anything but i would love to draw and this is not true because we all are able to draw which is quite uh, it's not that easy but it's possible to draw you can choose just you can choose from i think from two ways of how to draw if you wish to just draw, like doodling, you know, tangling, it's great and creativity way, uh -huh. creative way. Yeah. Uh, so this is great because uh, you you realized you are able to drop a pencil and do some lines and uh, uh, create some beautiful patterns, you know, and sometimes you need a guidance. Somebody helps you how to start, and then you are able to do it on yourself. You can uh, develop your own sketchbooks, your own patterns, you know, and you can do anything, every, anything you want. And there is another, um, uh, an, another way of drawing, and this is the way when you want to draw what you see, which is a little bit different. It's not uh -huh. doing, it's what you see, and you, you want to draw it. And this is uh, quite complicated because it needs um, to be more um, strict on yourself, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be more patient. But you must to, to you must you you really must want to draw. Mm -hmm. If you want to draw, you want to start. It's easy. It's it's not that easy, but it is possible to start. And that's why I call it. Uh, killer class <laughs> because this is uh, just about switching of your uh, thinking of think of things you want to draw this is just 
it's it's not that complicated to explain maybe for me in english it's complicated a little bit but i try to explain what's the what the matter uh maybe you and people who are listening now um remember when we were small children and some teacher or your aunt for example tell you told you uh, draw your mom and you drew your mom and it was your mom you were satisfied yes you were five years old for example and you there were no concerns or no doubts maybe you remember this this was okay i was you were drawing it was okay it was great i was drawing my family my uh, pets friends everything my uh, home you know garden trees everything was completely okay do you remember i so you remember were free. maybe you remember you yeah. were free so and this is about mm, our brain so when we reach nine year ninth year of our age we are changing this is something like pre mm, uh, adolescent wait it's it's before adolescent adolescent uh, and we are changing our brain is changing we are more analyzing analy analyzing things yeah. yes and this this is a, a, about from nine till twelfth year of our age, when you may, why, uh, when we are changing, and um, find, you are ten, your aunt t uh, tells you just draw your mom or myself, and mm. you realize it's not you, it's not my mom, I cannot <laughs> draw, yeah. and this is when we are, you know, we are different, we, our. Uh, uh, when we see something we we see everything different because we are more like on our left side of our brain this is a psychology thing and uh, this is it this is when uh, our um, fear of drawing sometimes can start and we after these uh, terrible years when teachers at school wanted uh, uh, wanted to draw everything we see something you know some still life uh, some trees for example so yeah. there you realize oh i cannot see i cannot draw i'm not able to draw so sometimes you you decide uh, not to draw any any anymore <laughs> you know <laughs> you broke your pencil you know yeah. do you yeah. know i remember it so well and it, i think it's the same with dancing and speaking Portuguese. So, you know, my two examples are, you know, as when I, I think as a child, you dance, don't you? And um, you think you're Pharrell or or Bruno Mars or someone, you know, or Justin Timberlake when when you're, you're a kid and you just see him dancing on the TV, you do it and you think, like you said, like that, you, the picture you drew is your mum, you're Bruno Mars or Pharrell or Justin Timberlake. And then for me, a, like a girl tells you, you're not Justin Timberlake or Pharrell, and that's my dancing career is over. A bit like breaking the pencil as an artist. Exactly. And my and my daughter, my my four year old daughter, to her she speaks Portuguese. She opens her mouth, she says lots of sounds that sound Portuguese, and to her she's speaking Portuguese. If I do that in a shop, I'm going to get taken away by the police or something like that because it's it's different, isn't it? In my mind, I'm so self conscious, and obviously the other adults are self conscious, and we have a different understanding of it but this growing up thing it's such a, a, an interesting idea because look this was um sent to me this is um yes this, this is, is your a, this is your, a, your, no, the, a friend of mine on uh, at the beginning of lockdown said my daughter is drawing portraits of people send a picture and we'll get a portrait done and the girl ellie sent this and Perfect. she she's at that age isn't she where she's not too self-censoring she is she is there she be minded yes and she sent me this beautiful picture and i said i'd love to pay you for that i'd love to give you some you know pocket money to, to, but it's a lovely thing you've done so i so understand this and i also see the parallel in everything we try and do so like we were talking before weren't we about learning portuguese it's the same thing you become self-conscious you become self-judgmental so the what's the way if we've got this parallel um, you're helping people to not break their pencil, but to use that to love their pencil. And we can use this same approach in speaking Portuguese, can't we? What do you need to do to yourself to to overcome this? 
uh, well, uh, this is it's uh, it's quite easy. <laughs> you must switch. Good. You must just switch from your left side to the right side of your brain. Okay. Just uh, in um, in subject of drawing, this is you must be patient. It's important. You have to be patient, and you uh, have to have some time because the switching is not in in a minutes. You know, you must keep working keep practicing but this is not that complicated uh i will show you i have here something on um, picture for example uh, i don't know which so this is very simple very simple portrait of person yeah yes this is when i tell you for example please carol just uh, draw your favorite person uh -huh. and you don't have any guide and nobody who, who would help you so you draw something like this for example yes and then after um, after training you can do you can draw something like this mm -hmm. you know there is a little bit and you can be more specific with the details also this is quite sim quite quick amazing you know, yeah it's very quick made it was quick done done Oh, sorry for my English. So this is uh, if you if you try to have more time with the drawing. Oh, sorry, I'm switching sides. <laughs> uh, um, so, something like mirroring here when I see my camera here. Uh, when you take more time, you can be more de uh, work to um, take m m more time for working with details. It's also possible. It's not that complicated, but you can see the change. You know, I really can, and that illustrates what you were saying. Pardon the choice of words there, pardon the pun, but it does illustrate, doesn't it? Like drawing what you think you see, a kind of caricature, and then beginning mm -hmm. to draw what is, you know, classically, you know, representative uh, artwork, which takes that more of a discipline and patience than the switch. Yes, and that this is not that easy as I showed you. This is, this is there is nothing to to see uh, how the killer class is processing but this is about um, about some ex, um, some techniques we are going to try and test ourselves ourselves how to switch from your um, anal analytical brain mm -hmm. left side because our left side is uh, telling us uh, well I want to draw for example I have here sunglasses I have to draw sunglasses and I know that this is sunglasses and I know how they look look like you know mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are more thinking about what we are seeing not we are not like watching it watching it um, it's complicated to explain but this is uh, uh, this technique is about more think about what you are watching, looking at, look, you do what you are looking at, mm -hmm. not what you are knowing you are looking at. Yes. This is about you are more, because our right side of our brain is different. It's more, it's full of creativity. Yes. And uh, uh, there are some um, um, techniques, experiments, uh, we will be going through uh, for to switch to our right side of our brain and I think I don't have it here but maybe you know very famous I'm sorry uh, a very famous picture uh, in black and white and ah I but this is maybe I'm not sure if it will work um, is is there something to see? I will just zoom into you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, I like, like this. So you can look at this. This is yeah. badly done. <laughs> but you can see maybe something which is black. Yeah. Or something which is uh, white. Indeed. So this is, for example, we can, um, during my class, during this killer class, it will be about, for example, what is in the middle, not just about two profiles of person. Yeah. You yeah. know, when we are uh, trying to uh, pay attention more, what is in the middle, what are, for example, negative parts. And yeah. this is like you are more um, 
free like you are not so scared that it's it's you are you don't know how to draw sunglasses or your, or how to draw portraits uh during my killer class we will start we will try to draw some fruit beautiful and it's it's really not very complicated finally it looks After good as sorry i no, <laughs> with my camera sorry and these this is what people can expect right yeah exactly yes fantastic fantastic and you know uh, these are, this is a life lesson as well isn't it to be using uh, that well brain. i have it um, i was thinking i have my lessons already um, already made already um, they are they are like video lessons you know i have my video parts of my all class and there you can uh, you can um, uh, start when you want when you have your time but oh. uh, i decided to try just to test them with some beta testers with people who uh stands my english but who really want uh, to draw to try it and not who are not professionals it's important because for professionals it's worthless mm -hmm. and uh, this is what what i need to know i need some feedback from them so i prepared already my classes but i want to make a uh, few uh, live um, live shows with What's them you yep. know, like we are now broadcasting, so I will be live <laughs> on my Facebook page, and uh, uh, we 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 will try to for some basics together. I, I wish to try with people who would be my testers who would have some time. <laughs> in Fantastic. And people do have, people do have that time and space now, don't they? Or just about, like I said before, <laughs> they still have. Things are rapidly going back to normal, and I don't know how it is around the world around the world for sure but around portugal i think it's varying about and people are in confusion but certainly some people are still staying at home and it's a lovely time to learn how to draw and i think the parallels the the life lessons are there as well about how we could use the other parts of our brain to be in life and to be in community and be in relationship with other people if we were more in our right brain we'd live in a different world i think I think after quarantine, we will be completely different. <laughs> <laughs> there is that as well. So um, I'm just going to, I'm sure I've been trying to show some of your lovely work here. I mean, I, I find these particularly sort of joyous and vibrant uh, and, and your, the, you know, your lovely color schemes that you use here. Um, how I've got your website there as well. Um, how do people get involved, get in touch with you if they want to be one of your testers? Uh, they can contact me during Facebook. It's it's the best thing. My name is Dagmar Kruskova. Uh, oh. I don't know how to if I write it somewhere here or. I've got on your, it, it, your the spelling of Kruskova is on the um, on the screen there. So Dagmar Kruskova. I think Dagmar is such a lovely name, um, and it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. And just to talk a little bit more about Portugal, I'm guessing you're loving this country. Uh, yes, this my story. My story is very long, I would say, but maybe <laughs> not very in inspiring. But we decided to live with my family in Portugal after traveling a world a little bit. Little bit. We um, uh, we visited uh, South America for some time, and it was uh, our life lesson because we were thinking oh it could be good to to try to live somewhere very far from europe it can be different and free and perfect for our, for us but after some time there we decided we have to go back we have to be we are europeans so we have to <laughs> return but um, we didn't want to go back to the czech republic uh, and uh, when you one cross the ocean, it's then you don't solve where you want to start in the Europe. Uh, if I under, uh, if I explaining it uh, well, so for us to start in Portugal was very easy after um, crossing the ocean. You know, for Europeans go there and back again, and uh, we had. Uh, very good new, good news or no news uh, from our our friend our friends uh from the czech republic 
uh, were happy with Portugal. They they recommended us to go to Portugal many years ago. It was a long story, uh, and but we wanted to try something different, something which, which is some country not in Europe. But then after some time we realized we have to go back, and then we decided, okay, now it's the time to start <laughs> to live here. And I think I'm I'm quite fine here. I'm learning Portuguese, and uh, I like people, and I like weather, except winters. That, that depends. <laughs> that depends what construction uh, your house has. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. In the north of Portugal, winters can be a little bit harsh and unexpected, can't they? Exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. The winter was crazy, and uh, but we we survived. <laughs> and you now did. it's <laughs> you did. And now, isn't it lovely? We really feel like it's spring and summer coming now, and all is forgiven. About, and it's like a long distance. Exactly. Memory. Exactly. <laughs> I, I I forgot already. <laughs> I have forgot. Maybe. you. Same here, but I was so glad, you know, at the solstice time, I could understand why our ancestors were so glad to, to go to the shortest day and know that the longer days were coming again and why they celebrated at that time of year. You know, I, for the first time in my life, I really understood that, that we were all coming out of hibernation again. But anyway, um, if, if we could conclude with um, maybe you said you're learning the language and we like to share a little bit of vocabulary or Portuguese here. Are there any, not very much, but a couple of, couple of words or phrases you would share maybe to do with art? Or your favorite Portuguese phrases? What would you What would you say they are? <laughs> My favorite, I, I forgot already a lot. Um, bom dia, uh, chamo-me Dagmar. Como está? <laughs> Tudo bem? É um algo para saber. That's a good one. Uh, I say, but that's like when you get into that bit after you've said who you are, and the Portuguese person says something else, and then you have to say, I, "Sorry, I don't understand." So that's I I know percebe. I don't understand, right? Percebi. I don't understand. Oh, no, yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Ah, I was just thinking. I have, there, there is somewhere, some uh, some uh, book of Portuguese language. I was, I'm thinking, you, you surprised me. Well, we haven't, we haven't really done that, even that before. So you said, Sashama uh, Dagmar. So if somebody wants to say their name after they've done the um, Bon Dia to the Bain bit, it's ah. Sashama. Shamama, Shamama Dagmar. Oh, okay. Como, okay. Como se chama? Is what's your name? <laughs> okay, there's something for you, everybody, this morning to practice today. Tell somebody, tell a Portuguese person your name. Maybe say hello and how are you first, rather than just going up into the ministry and saying my name is as in chamo me Carlos. Um, but um, and, and you were right. I think I don't know if you said this on air or or, or bef uh, before when we were talking, but it is really important to learn the language, isn't it? And that's obviously an important thing for you. For me, it is very important. Yes, I have to. I have to learn a language. But you know, now, how? Yes. Oh, I, I was thinking that something happened. No, uh, do for, here. for now, I you know, I'm just going to shop. <laughs> so I use phrases in shop, and sometimes when I was. I used some phrase, uh, several phrases about my desenhar when uh, quando eu desenho, desenho, si, desenho e pinto. Okay, then, so desenhos are your designs or your illustrations? And uh, desenho, si, si, si. Quando eu desenho, quando uh, when I draw or when, quando eu pinto os meus uh, obras, os meus desenhos, eu uso. Um, eu uso papel, eu, eu uso papel e eu uso, sim, eu uso papel com grande, alta, gramas, porque eu preciso te, ter, sim, eu preciso ter uh, um papel bom <risos> para desenhar com lápis, sim, com lápis, sim, e com carvão, carvão, carvão. <laughs> I think you're showing off now. I think you're definitely showing off. And I think on the replay, people can go with your lesson there, which I think was in, you know, how in when people are doing uh, language lessons, it, it's the scene, isn't it, where you go into a shop and ask, this is the artist going into a shop and what they might say. So check it out on the replay, everybody, and uh, translate for yourself and repeat after Dagmar on the replay about going into a shop and talking about your art and 
buying some paper, I believe, is what she was doing there. Do you have an official welcome from Druber uh, here? And who says, what an artist? I think he's enjoying your work, uh, which can be seen at uh, on WordPress, krishkova.wordpress.com. Uh, I went straight to the illustrations, which I really love about your work. And you've done some beautiful work for a friend of mine, Freya, uh, as well. <laughs> which is how I, uh, you know, I, I joined those dots and uh, it, it's lovely to take a deeper look at your work. And I thank you so much for joining us this morning, Dagmar. I wish you well with your it, it was my pleasure, Carl. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, find Dagmar on Facebook. Uh, there you go, Dagmar Kushkova, uh, to become a beta tester or even to learn how to draw and get more into your right brain and maybe suspend a little bit of your left brain. We're living in too much of a left brain world, mm -hmm. I think. Final word here, I think, to Peter. One of my favorite Portuguese words is, I hope this is uh, savory, al, al, a baladisa, the first word here. It means one thing. That sounds very good. That sounds like a really good bit of bonding vocabulary to share with your Portuguese friends and neighbors. So... A baladisa um, to you. To logo. Uh, muito obrigado. E uh, até a próxima. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, especially to you, Dagmar. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice time. Bye. <laughs>